Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Setting the Hook. Oh, I made a bit of a road trip today. We're in Ottawa, Ontario, and we're fishing on the Ottawa River. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Welcome to the Muskie Factory. So, Lisa, you're, uh, you're a guide with the Ottawa River Muskie Factory. You've been doing that, what, two years now? Full-time two years. Full-time two years. And uh, what are we doing here? What, what are we looking for today? We're chasing fall giants. We're talking big fish. We're talking big baits. This is a 14-inch Franken-Suic. And uh, you've put a lot of fish in the boat lately with these franken Oh, the Suics have been on fire. Yeah, five of my last six fish on Suics. Nice, nice. All right, so stay tuned, folks. We're gonna go catch ourselves a big old muskie. Oh, what's a big fish? There he is. Yeah. Got him. Just when you think he's ready for the net, he turns out it's just a greedy fish. That was an angler skill. <laughs> That's probably my favorite part, eh? When you feel that tap and you set the hook and you feel that solidness. But he's heavy. Hell, he's been eating pretty good out there. And we got ourselves a good salmon. People travel all over the world for these fish. So uh, let's do that again. And let's face it, the Niagara River is a, is a buffet for fish. Let's get him back in the water. Setting the Hook with Brett Bochak is brought to you by Fish Envy and Live to Fish. You want to cast about 10 feet past those, yeah? Fish, fish. Nice, fish. nice, nice, nice. Well, we've been out here in the Ottawa River for maybe, what, 10 minutes casting, <laughs> and uh, we got our first fish on here. Oh, it's a decent fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot bigger fish than what I anticipated to start with. 10 minutes in, and we yes! got our first giant Ottawa River muskie <laughs> in the bag. Nice, Thank you, Lisa. Man. Great job. Awesome. First spot Lisa took us to, and uh, that is a beautiful, thick That's fish. That's a nice fall fish right there. <laughs> that makes that six hour drive this morning worth it. Um, Lisa said, let's get on the water right away. There's a peak coming on on the moon phase. And we got one in the net, Lisa. Nice one. That's awesome. Great job. Cool. Nice net job there. <laughs> let's get Puts her us in. right on the spot. Let's get those hooks out and uh, quick picture and get her back in the water. I'm just going to take my jacket off here so I can move a little bit better. <laughs> That's awesome. Great job, Sweet. Lisa. <laughs> so that back down anywhere nice. there. Seems decent. Thick, thick, thick. Look at the back. I know. When I seen him coming in, <laughs> I seen how thick he was. It's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. I want to get her head back in the water, though. At least it's cold out. Yeah. Oh, look at the belly on that fish. There we go. Don't that's, a, that's a fish that's been feeding really, really good. Oh, yeah. That's a nice, beautiful fall river, or fall uh, on a river muskie. Nice. We'll get a quick measurement on her, and we'll get her back in the water. Five. Sweet. Nice, man. Slimed. <laughs> That's a strong start right there. I got my first uh, hook in the hand while I'm doing a fish the other day. Oh. That sucks when they start thrashing. Oh my I god. Had, touch wood. I haven't had that with a muskie. No? But I've had it muskie fishing on the uh, Upper Niagara yep. out in Buffalo Harbor years ago. I got a 48 inch by 24 and a quarter that morning. Yeah. I got a lost one that was probably close to that size. I got a pike. And then about a six pound walleye on a 10 inch believer hooked by the tail area. 
and I went down to grab it. He flipped and uh, yeah, trouble right through the back of my hand. It, fortunately, it came back out like the barb came through. Yeah. So I was going to release that fish originally. <laughs> I ate him. <laughs> Cast over that. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. That was very cool. How long have you been working with Suik? Oh, forever. It's been a real game changer for me this year, figuring things out in the fall. Yep. They paid, they've uh, paid off well for you? Oh yeah. And I find it's just, it's such a versatile bait that you can give to people who are new. You know, that's the one thing that I struggle with in the fall. I take people out who aren't very experienced and... Right. The blades, you cast them out and crank them, right? Right. So. And I've even found, you know, because obviously it's the dying fish presentation and it's all about the erraticness. So I've had people who have been doing some crazy things with it that I never thought would have worked. Okay. Boom, you know. I had a lady get her first fish last week and she was just moving it like three inches at a time. Just okay. Slight little I was pumps. doing that with a little Leo uh, last week and I got a fish. Yeah. You got fish on this one? Yeah, to the point where it's... That's my favorite. Is color. it done? <laughs> Two years ago, I got 25 fish on this color bait yeah. in uh, June. Really? Out of 30 fish, 25 came on that. And part of the reason was I used it a lot because I was catching fish on it, right? So you just keep using it. Yeah. If, if you don't have confidence in the bait, you're not going to throw it with the same enthusiasm and you're not going to fish it as long. Yeah, I got a couple longer rods, the uh, Fantasia Beast. Okay. Yeah. They're very expensive rods, but I like the uh, I like these Veritas. They're not that expensive, but I like the action on them. I like the length of them. Okay. And they, uh, I find those sometimes with those longer rods. Yeah. When you're throwing a bigger bait, it's almost like it's too much of a catapult, like too much weight at the end. Okay. Makes with sense, all that yeah. leverage. Yeah. It just feels like it's even heavier. It just feels awkward. Mm -hmm. When I first started muskie fishing, my first rod was a Fenwick. Yeah. It was five foot nine. <laughs> yeah, the trend has been go big, eh? Holy. Yeah, it's, they keep getting longer and, you know, it was personal preference, right? Yeah. I'm not going to say one works better than the other, because it's whatever your personal preference is. But for glides though, right? People say that it's easier to work the glides with the shorter rods. Right. Do you find that? Uh, yeah, I just, I find the longer rods are awkward yeah. overall. So Lisa, you've been guiding here for the Ottawa River Muskie Factory for what, two years now? Yes. What the heck got you into muskie fishing? <laughs> uh, kind, of a, kind of a funny story. So uh, my girlfriend got me a, a guided trip to go with John Anderson uh, almost 10 years ago, actually, as a birthday present. I'd never been muskie fishing before. I'd never used a bait caster. I uh, just stumbled across it on the, uh, on the internet. Just thought, man, that looks like an incredible fish. I want to catch one. You know? and, and there's no better guy to fish with than John. No, yeah, it was pretty evident pretty quick doing my research that he was the guy. Uh, he was the guy I wanted to go out with. So, so we went out. It was the middle of November, and it was absolutely frigid. You know, lines were icing up. I remember it very clearly. It was a blue sky day. You know, John talking about the barometer, and it, things were tough. We hadn't seen any fish, but John kept talking about this moon peak. So. <laughs> He took us to the spot for the moon peak. He's casting with us, and this is how in tune this guy is. He literally cast, said, I just got a fish bump right there. Lisa cast right there. So I did. Sure enough, the fish flashed on my lure. I set the hook. Uh, at the time, I didn't know I was naturally left. So I was kind of holding my reel awkwardly like this. Right, so and you were using the right handed bait? Uh, right, right handed reel. bait caster, yep. And just, as soon as that fish hit, adrenaline took over, and I just started cranking my scarf. <laughs> got sucked into my reel uh, <laughs> and actually broke his tranks. You know, the line went slack. We were all very upset, <laughs> cursing. You know, I'm thinking I've just- There's no cursing in my condition. <laughs> I'm thinking I've just lost the fish of my life and I've broken his $500 reel. You know, I was, I was pretty devastated. And John, John took it really well. You know, he said, let's not worry about it. Stuff happens, keep fishing. We'll, we'll get another chance. So we're bringing the line in just by hand, just to get it in. He's setting up another reel for me. And I felt a weight and I said, John, the fish is still on. And uh, <laughs> we were all pretty shocked. And I think what saved uh, the situation was that it was so cold and the fish felt so little resistance with me pulling the line in gently that it didn't really fight per se. 
until it got to the side of the boat, saw us, saw the net, and went absolutely ballistic. John, it was, it was the best net job ever. He just scooped right in there, fish is in the net, and of course, the second the fish is in the net, the lure just falls right out of its mouth. It was, uh, it was quite the experience. I'll never forget that day. It changed everything for me. No, and, so, uh, and that's something I've talked about before. You never forget your first muskie. Oh, no, 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 no. Every detail of that trip I remember for sure. Oh, oh. I might have just got, as you say, bumped there. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. Sorry, right, yeah, you never forget your first muskie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't remember my first bass or my first walleye, but 100% I can remember my first four or five muskie. Mm -hmm, absolutely, yeah. The other funny part of the story is my girlfriend is quite squeamish with uh, anything to do with nature. <laughs> and, uh, she didn't really want to touch the fish, and it was a big fish. How, how big was it? it? Was, well, this is the funny part of the story. <laughs> we didn't get to measure it because uh, <laughs> I'm holding the front end of the fish, and my girlfriend refuses to touch it, so she's doing this on the back, okay? Yeah. Uh, John can't get my camera turned on because I had a DSLR at the time. So I reach my hand out of the fish to reach across to turn the camera on, and I reach it back in, and when I do, of course, the, the fish goes absolutely berserk. And my girlfriend was like, oh, hell no, and just did one of these, created the perfect slide, and went right back on the water. <laughs> so we have one picture of this fish, and then another picture of us going, what happened? What the heck? <laughs> so we didn't get to measure it, but it was a fall fatty, and it was, it didn't, the length didn't matter, it was just the experience. You, you know? got the fish, you got yeah. a picture, and you yep. got the memories that last a lifetime. Exactly, yeah. So what's your personal best, Brent? Uh, 36 pounds, I guess. 30? Uh, 50 by 24. Oh, nice, okay. Then the next year later, a week different, we got a 48 by 24 and a quarter. Nice. About 100 yards from that spot. Really? We got a 50 inch in the cordless. Lots of 46s and 48s in that. But then, you know what, the court, fish in the cordless a lot, right? You're not catching 50 inch fish either. Right. Like what's a big fish there? 45 is a big good fish, or? I think over 40 is a good fish. Really? Okay. I consider 44 a big fish there. That's just you know what I consider. Yeah. Any fish is a good fish, but. It's hard guiding on the Niagara because you can go days without seeing a fish and then all of a sudden you get two, two or three fish in a day right. or fish in a day or something but how about yourself? The first one with John? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily I've had some bumped a couple since. <laughs> that one was probably now looking back knowing what I know it was probably I don't know maybe 46, 47 but right. it was fish. just girthy right? It yeah. was just fall, fall fat so but I just remember, like, I remember just holding that thing and just, it was the size of the head and the eyes, right? The eyes get you. Right, right. You don't expect that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But yeah, I actually got my personal best on the St. Lawrence. Oh, right on. Last year, and it was pretty cool because it was my first spot at muskie. Yeah. And it was also the first muskie that I've ever sight fished because I'm used to fishing yeah. these conditions, right? Oh, you actually seen the fish and cast it too? Yeah, so we were in, We've been fishing all day deep, and then we we spent the afternoon fishing like the weed, weed lines five to eight feet, and nothing, nothing, nothing. And I said, you know what? Let's go shallow. And we were in two feet of water in front of an island. Really? And this muskie just cruised past us, and of course we're we're chucking at it, and it's just like turning away, like yeah, right. I can see you guys Come on, right? Right. And so it went off behind the boat, and I said, you know what? I turned around and did one hail mary cast behind the boat, two cranks, and it hit. Nice. So it was pretty cool. It was 52. Wow, nice. But it was real thin, like it wasn't a it wasn't a real girthy fish. Okay. It was. Uh, Where on the St. Lawrence was that? Uh, I launched out of um, not far from Cornwall. Are you familiar with like Summerstown, that kind of area? Okay, up that way. Yeah. I fished the St. Lawrence with Bill Barber last year. Oh, did you? For a couple of days. How'd that go? Oh, uh, we got a couple of pike. Was it? Yeah. Uh, it was in the end of September. No, sorry, the end of August. Mm. And it's more like he was just kind of starting to see if the fish were coming in yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it was still a real cool experience yeah. fishing with, you know, just being out know, with Bill. I don't know if you know Bill or not, but. I've heard of him for sure. Great guy. He's caught a lot of big fish there. The, the, a little scary though, what's going on with the, the, the spawning, right? Yeah. Or lack of spawning, I should say. Mm -hmm. But it's such a cool fishery. I find it's a really good uh, learning tool for me mm -hmm. because I can go down and catch a fish, but then I can actually go and physically see, okay, what was it relating to? Right, and right, even okay. Even 10 feet of water, you can see right to the bottom, crystal right. clear, right? Whereas here, I'm just going purely based on my electronics. Remember how we were talking about body position? That's rocks. Remember we were talking about body positioning earlier? I did get bumped, and I was like this, and I had nowhere to go to set the hook. My own fault. Well, it's because we were talking, right? And sometimes I notice you just kind of give it a little twitches. Mm. Have you found one? Well, that ain't gonna work. You never know, but chances are. I just like to work it really erratically myself. John's been saying this week his his big tactic is like crazy long pauses, like three seconds. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. Especially when that water gets colder, right? Yeah. He even had one hit the other day. He was just literally talking inside of the boat like this. Boom. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Lisa, I see you're throwing that white and orange suet there. That's a nighthawk color. That's actually my favorite color in the Corth, isn't that tea stained water? Why do you, uh, what, what do you look for colors out here in the uh, Ottawa River? Well, we have a tan and stained water here and uh, I like to go dark and light. So for me, whites, uh, white is my favorite go-to, especially a white-bellied suix are, are really, really great here. Uh, orange is also, like I said, the other great color. I have the orange with the black dot suic that uh, gets me a lot of fish as well. Right. So you're saying Moon Eye is one of the uh, top uh, bait fish that you have out here for these muskie. Now they're kind of a white silvery color, right? They are, yeah. It's definitely one of their, their favorite forages. They're actually quite a large uh, bait fish. They run anywhere from, get as large as 10 to 14 inches uh, white. And obviously they have these great big eyes, hence the Moon Eye name. Right. So that's one of the reasons you go with that white color? Definitely, for sure, white, yeah. They also like dark colors. So is there a difference? Uh, you know, today we got an overcast day. What I would pretty much consider a, a, you know, an ideal musky day, really. Exactly, yeah. and traditionally in these conditions, you know, it's dark day, dark lure, right? Right. But for me, myself, I just find these uh, white white lures here on the Ottawa are just uh, killer any time of day. Right, right, and any time of the season. Yes, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I know in the Quarth is uh, where I do a lot of musky fishing. That, uh, as I said, that color is dynamite for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's spring, summer, or fall. It, it seems to produce. Yeah, for me, the suics are, are more about the action. You know, it, it's the dying or injured uh, bait fish presentation that, uh, that gets the fish going. Is there times where you find a straight retrieve works better with these or? People talk about, let the fish tell you what they want. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're musky fishing and you know, you fit, there's obviously lately, there's been some great days out here. Like Mike had what, four fish yesterday or something. Yeah. But it's not like you're bass fishing where, you know, Well, you go bass fishing, you're expecting to catch. You know, if I'm guiding for bass, I could do a, every now and then a bass trip in the Quarthas, right? Fishing smallies with Senkos around, or, you know, wacky rigged worms around docks and stuff. You're gonna catch 20, 30 fish. Not all big, but the rod's gonna get bent. And you can figure stuff out there. Sometimes they like it moving a little bit, sometimes sitting still, sometimes a tube jig will outfish it, but you can figure that out, right? Here, when you some days you're fishing for one bite. Right, so. How do you figure out what they want? And really, what if you could have caught four on rubber, but you caught one on blades, and then yeah. you keep checking blades, right? It's like. Exactly. <laughs> I am going to go back to the suic soon because. Yeah, me too. I'm going to switch this up. And partly because that's a confidence bait for me. So for you, I mean, I don't know what the course is, but here, but when are you making your decision to go shallow versus the edges, like push right in? Um. You know what, the quarth is you don't get transient fish so much. Okay. There's only so many places they can go. In the quarth, like here, 
you got a lot of river. Right. And you get fish tra traveling, right? Right. Here, try to my house here yesterday. I'm like, fish. Yep. You want yep. Oh, that one feels a little stronger. <laughs> Tail. He's got some power to him. Oh, yeah. Nice fish again. Nice Not as long as the other one, I don't think, but still a nice fish. A little more added to that, for sure. <laughs> there we go. Ready, Lisa? Coming in. All right, get his head turned this way. Whoop. Little tail splash on you. <laughs> Just waving hello. Get his head. Whoop. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You got an attitude. There we go. Ooh, he's just on that back hook. Got, got him. him. Nice job, nice match up. <laughs> that fish is on the back hook, which is a lot. Nine okay. times out of ten. Thank you. Nine times out of ten or more, you're going to get that fish in the front hook. All right. Let's uh, get him out. Quick picture, we'll get him back in. That's exciting when that happens. Love it. All right. Good call there, Lisa. Oh, you know what? Oh yeah, it's right through that. Cut. There we go, ready? Okay, there we go. Another, sorry at least I get in here. <laughs> Another Ottawa River muskie. These are heavy fish, Lisa. These are <laughs> nice, thick, strong, heavy fish. Look at that. What do you think? That's uh, now I know why John hired you. There's two fish there, what? Just a few <laughs> hours over here today. Let's get her back in the water. Well, when you're out muskie fishing, it's very important to have a pair of cutters. On those two fish we've got so far, we've had to cut the hooks off because when you're muskie fishing, you don't want to get in there and start ripping hooks out. Muskie do make up less than 1% of our fish population out there. So we, you know what, we enjoy catching them. We want to make sure we release them nice and clean and healthy again. Uh, so sometimes you got to get in there to cut the hooks if they're hooked really deeply. Those fish that we've caught, they had the hooks really good on them. It's a lot easier to get in there and cut them. Lisa has a nice pair of Nipex cutters here and they work great for cutting hooks. Well, it's very important to have extra hooks. Lisa's got a whole box of hooks here. So I'm going to put a new hook on this Curly Sue here. We have a pair of split ring pliers here. So that little tip will actually get into the split ring there, open it up a bit so I can get my new hook on there. And I'll be back out fishing in no time. Get with the pliers, pull it through, a couple of twists, and I'm back in business. So people are often surprised when they come to the factory when one of the first things that I tell them is that 50% of our fish are caught within 10 feet of the side of the boat. There aren't too many species of fish that you can target in such a way. And I tell my clients, how you finish at this side of the boat will determine if you have a good day of muskie fishing or a great day of muskie fishing. In certain lures, only 10% of the time do we get the hit on the retrieve, but that's where we pick up the follows. So once you've worked hard to get the fish to the side of the boat, the most important thing to do is trigger the fish into striking. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. For me, the most important thing is a speed increase. If you slow down at all, the fish will fade away. They definitely want uh, an increase of speed. And with burst speeds of 50 kilometers an hour, you can't, you can't go too fast. So anytime that I come into the side of the boat, first thing I do if I have a fish follow me is a turn and a speed increase. Usually they strike right there. Sometimes you have to do continued figure eights or circles, take the bait up higher or lower to get the fish to trigger. So you're saying you're born in England, but and how did you end up down here in Ottawa? Uh, well, my family immigrated to Canada when I was seven years old. My mom uh, met my dad, who was in England doing his PhD, and yeah, we <laughs> we came back to Canada. Mosh, well, how did you end up in uh, the Ottawa region? Well, we, we traveled around quite a bit because of my dad's job. He's a professor, so um, it took a while for him to get his tenure. Now my family's all in New Brunswick, which I consider to be home. Right. Uh, but my work, my previous career actually took me all across Canada. I worked in retail mm -hmm. and ended up in Ottawa and I absolutely love it here. I've been here, I think actually it's coming up on 12 years, I believe this year. 
and I just love it. I love, like for us, we live outside of Ottawa, in a little small town, and the big city's right there. So it kind of has the best of both worlds, you know? Right, right. Yeah, and how, how can you leave this area? You got tremendous musky fishing. Exactly, right? World-class musky fishing, 15 minutes from my front door. It's right. Awesome. So Lisa, I want to thank you very much for having me out in the uh, Ottawa River here today. You know, they used to say if musky fishing was a fish of 10,000 casts. Well, we sure didn't make 10,000 casts today. We've only been out here for maybe, what, three hours? Yes. And we put two real nice fish in the boat. Fantastic afternoon. That's water. fantastic. Absolutely. If you want to cut down on those 10,000 casts, make sure you hire yourself a great guide like Lisa. And we'll see you next time on Setting the Hook.